Einen wunderschönen guten Abend in den deutschsprachigen Raum von Journey to the Chateau. Bonjour à tous, à bienvenue à Journey to the Chateau. And now, of course, in English, hello to and welcome to Journey to the Chateau. This is our, our I think, 17th vlog? I think so. And um, it is the last Chateau that we actually toured while we were in France last time, um, last week of October. After this, we went to spend one night at the Chateau de Beaulieu and uh, with the Maguires and then we spent two more days in uh, the Chateau Le Fleur in um, Gonville sur En Fleur. Uh, that, that was, uh, the, so those two and a half last days were actually a little bit of a vacation. Uh, it was fantastic and well we hope you like what we show you in this vlog about the Chateau. Located about 45 kilometers southwest of Bouge, in the region of Centre-Val-de-Loire, the chateau is located in the Department of Cher and has origins dating back to the 16th century. The city of Bouge has a population of over 64,000 and has a long tradition of art and history. It is home to the Bouge Cathedral that was completed in the year 1230. This cathedral was built in the high Gothic style of architecture and it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992. This 400 square meter 18th century chateau is on its original 16th century foundations. It is on three levels with 21 rooms, seven bedrooms, and 17 outbuildings. The chateau and its buildings offer original elements from the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. This estate in the quiet French countryside includes a park of 3.3 hectares. It includes a front gate with a semicircular dry moat, the chateau, two front wings with original 16th century towers, a separate farmhouse cottage, an open hangar garage, a farmstead courtyard that includes a barn, a vacherie cow stables, and multiple livestock buildings, a small chapel, a dovecot, five longhouse barns, two potager gardens, and a small lake. This is a great aerial view of the front courtyard or court d'honneur. The uh, left side with the terracotta tiled roof and the tower attached is from the 16th century the, uh, and so is the tower on the right flanking the front and the entire building on the right. It's all 16th century and we were looking for rural. That would be something this chateau clearly checks. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and this is a chateau that we actually did visit uh, in October of last year when we were in France. Uh, the front of the chateau at the gate, it has a small bridge that spans an ancient dry moat that's in an arc. Arriving here, we um, really like the symmetry of the front. The uh, door and the two windows to the left and the right and above uh, that was all built in the 1640s and the two wings left and right of the chateau itself were built in the 1750s. Right, and this uh, this large courtyard, which it is very large courtyard in front of the chateau, is actually all a gravel courtyard. Yes. And it had quite been overgrown with weeds and grass from uh, uh, not being taken care of for uh, probably a few years. Yep. The ground floor of the chateau consists of an entry hall, a dining room, a china and linen room, a kitchen with scullery, a grand salon, a second salon, a library, 
a bedroom, and two water closets. Going through the front doors of the chateau, you first enter the entry hall. And you basically, um, it's this, this huge staircase with the original um, cast iron, or wrought iron, sorry, um, handrail. And the floor is from the 1640s. This is uh, the Pierre de Bourgogne or Burgundy Stone. Uh, and it has, it's uh, exactly the opposite of the front door is the, the door to the back. Um, that was quite impressive. Yes. Besides that, that, uh, dead, um, yeah, the taxidermy, not so much. Yeah. So ascending up to the, the first floor, it's, uh, it, it is quite a large hall for this size of a chateau. And, uh, there, there is actually a, a water closet underneath the stairs and there's a water closet behind that glass door uh, or door with a uh, window on uh, the top of the floor so anyone who has a weak bladder can go at downstairs <laughs> and then go right back yeah. on the other floor again yes just in case the one on the ground floor under the stairs was busy you can always run right up the stairs and use this one instead no that's true too so to the right of the entry hall you go into the dining room it's a huge room it's it's really big and so the original chateau had uh, the entrance hall, on the right the dining room, on the left, which we'll see later, uh, a living room, and then the landing upstairs and two bedrooms. That was it. That was, uh, well, in the bedroom under the rafters there, but um, that's the original chateau. We love the floor here. Uh, it's, it's really quite beautiful. And it has paneling, uh, double doors, and all original hardware. This chateau is equipped with oil-fired central heating, which has radiators. And here in the dining room, you can see one of the radiators, like we have talked about in some of our previous vlogs, that actually has a compartment for warming plates. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Now, what's missing in this room is the original, uh, no, Stuart loves that word, Kachelofen. So, uh, um, it is a terracotta oven that was in that alcove that is not there anymore. Right, we know from the floor plans of looking at the chateau that that is actually where a chimney is for the chateau and that is where a, some sort of a fireplace used to be. Continuing to the right from the dining room, you enter a small hallway and one of the rooms off of the small hallway is this china linen room. Yeah, so it has a built-in, uh, actually two built-ins. One is on the right visible, one is left behind this door with the windows in it. And um, this is where there was a, a connecting door between this room and the dining room. And this had all the china and uh, crystal ware and the linen for the dining room in it. This is the kitchen, um, like the china room, it was built in the 1750s, uh, has a huge uh, fireplace in it and uh, we actually saw the the uh, the original uh, wood burning no, not the original from the 1750s but there is a, a stove cooking stove wood fired uh, that's sitting in the garage that used to be here right. um, but with modern amenities that was no longer needed you know, it's it's really uh, it's it's quite big yeah it is a large kitchen uh, and it has these these beautiful uh, French ceilings and uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a lovely room. Going back to the entry hall, going to the left in the chateau, the next large room is the Grand Salon. Uh, the, the, the wallpaper in this room uh, was last, as far as the owners could tell us, uh, redone in the uh, early 1800s, and it's all Napoleon I furniture in this room which it's kind of this this evolution when when families own properties for a long time things do evolve so it like it's very much like today uh but just it things lasted longer yeah and it, it is a huge room yes it is and you can see that there's a 
a, a beautiful fireplace in this room with a really nice trumeau. Yes, and it, uh, almost all the fireplaces are Louis the Sixteenth. So in the uh, 17, uh, 70s and 1780s, the entire chateau was uh, re refitted um, to reflect the taste of the time. And then in the early 1800s, under Napoleon I, uh, the furniture was exchanged for uh, this furniture. So um, really interesting to see how, how these, these really old buildings evolve. Yes, and the one thing that I really love about this room, which uh, are in several of the rooms in the chateau, is when you look at the uh, fireplace and the trumeau, you see the, the door on the left to go into the next room, the next salon. It has uh, symmetry by putting in something on the right side that matched it on the right side, which in this case, they put in a little alcove with some shelving. Continuing on from the Grand Salon, the next room is another smaller salon. Uh, again, this is, this is in the um, style of the 18th century, uh, with Louis XVI uh, fireplace mantle, Trumeau, and two, two uh, closets next to the alcove. Now, um, some people might think this was built as a bedroom, but it was actually not. There are a few examples of alcoves that were in living rooms. Um, however, they had sometimes had day beds in them. So um, something I would love, just vanish and just take a nap. Exactly. Exiting the blue salon, there is uh, yet another hallway and the third staircase of the chateau. Uh, unless you count the one that goes from the landing to the upstairs, the second floor. Uh, this hallway goes to first on the right to the library and the second door on the right is to um, a bedroom which uh, is quite large but needs some uh, serious work. So the, having a look into the library, uh, if anyone knows when these um, the wallpaper was uh, approximately uh, produced because it looks to us like 1890s, early 1900s. Uh, it's a bit nouveau. Uh, so if anyone has any information, please let us know. Uh, it's it's a really nice room with a window out to the back. It's very quiet. One of the last rooms on the ground floor was this bedroom on the far left in the wing. As you can see, there was some water damage. The, the beam is reinforced. They dealt with it. Um, beautiful trumeau, very simple fireplace. And nice flooring. It's, it's uh, Tomet flooring. Really pretty. Continuing our tour, we use this staircase to go up to the first floor. Uh, the staircase and the handrail is all made out of walnut wood. And this is then uh, the beginning of our tour of the first floor. The first floor of the chateau consists of six bedrooms, three full bathrooms, and two water closets. Going up the stairs on the left side of the chateau, this is the hallway, and this goes into one of the first bedrooms on the first floor. Again, there is a Louis XV, sorry, XVI um, fireplace mantle. This is a very large bedroom. Um, 1750s, again, it's, um, it's a lovely room, lots of light. You look out into the back, um, very quiet. Uh, it has a built-in uh, closet or armoire, but uh, like they Many um, of the chateau, they, someone put this sink in the corner of the um, bedroom. Kind of not pretty. No. Mm, no. But the floors are gorgeous. From this bedroom, you, you go back into the hallway and you enter this huge bathroom. I mean, it's just really large. Um, overlooking the front, front uh, on a court with heat, shower, 
bathtub, uh, lots of closet space, really interesting. However, there is a connecting door to the next bathroom, which is the same size. Um, it, it's, it's a bit, it, I don't know, it's a bit confusing. So someone is in one bathroom and people walking through to go from one part to another. It doesn't quite make any sense. Uh, these bathrooms were redone in the 1950s. Um, we are relatively sure that they actually converted uh, some rooms to be these big bathrooms, but it's also a family with a lot of children and grandchildren. That's why sometimes you see uh, seven beds in one room, double beds. Right, right. Uh, it, it is pretty unusual to have uh, two large bathrooms that they decided that they needed to connect to each other. Uh, but, but and you know, still has beautiful Tibet floors in yes. both rooms and so much potential of uh, what it could be. Yeah. Having meandered through the two kind of odd bathrooms, um, this is the largest bedroom of the chateau. It's right above the pink salon, or red salon, I should say, because it just faded red, which turned to pink. Uh, this room is really ginormous. Now, what we loved about this was, um, besides the Louis XVI fireplace, yet again, it has two trumeaux. One is over the fireplace, one is uh, between the windows. However, the uh, entire walls are covered with hand-painted wallpaper. Right. We had talked to the, the realtor and the owner who uh, went on this tour with us, and we had learned that these pieces that we see on the wall are actually appliqued on top of wallpaper. Yes. But they are, uh, as far as the owners uh, knew, and they, they own the Chateau for, what, 150 years? Uh, they are uh, the original from, original appliques from the 1600s, 1640s, uh, which is really fascinating, and I wish we would have taken some pictures uh, that are close up, but right, we didn't. Right. So this beautiful large bedroom, um, the door opens up and you are on the landing, uh, overlooking both, the, there's a window for the front and the window for the back. And on the other side, it's uh, another bedroom. Right, and this is the, so this is the first floor landing and you can see on the right side, there's a curved wall. There is the, from previously you saw, there was the glass front door, which was a water closet that's inside there. And also to the right here, is a doorway that has stairs that go up to the second floor attic. Entering the door on the landing on, well, good lord, when it's basically to the right looking at the chateau. Uh, this is uh, another large bedroom, Louis XV style, uh, 16th, sorry, I don't know why I say Louis XV. It's Louis XVI style fireplace with alcove, uh, water closet, and opening up to yet another hallway. Uh, really pretty, true more beautiful windows out to the front. Continuing from the previous bedroom, you enter a hallway, and this is another bedroom that is off the hallway. Again, someone thought it was a good idea to put uh, a sink into the bedroom, and I suppose it's, it is quite a good idea. It's just not very attractive. Um, really lovely room, beautiful uh, lower third paneling. Um, Nice to make floors and uh, lot, lots of light um, kind of blocked by the curtains, but uh, that, that's all changeable. And I would assume you guessed it, there's yet another bedroom. <laughs> right, continuing from the, <laughs> out from the previous bedroom back out to the hallway, then this is another bedroom at the end of the hallway. Uh, it's a bit nondescript. Yeah. I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's nice, it's there, it's a bedroom, period. Yeah, and it's a little bit, for the, for the floor plan of the chateau, it's a bit of an inconveniently located room. It's sort of the, at the end of the hallway uh, coming from the left side, but if you want to continue, you have to go through the doorway through this bedroom. So if you were coming through the chateau, you basically, and this was your room, everyone would be coming through your bedroom. <laughs> How fun. 
this is, uh, I, well, it's not the last bedroom because there's one, one floor up from here, but this is the last functioning bedroom uh, overlooking to the back, very small, uh, really intimate, very cute, uh, and it has really gorgeous wallpaper. And um, we, I really, I, I love this room. This is the oldest surviving bathroom of the Chateau. So this was built in 1904 with a zinc bathtub, which is original. The toilet is not. The sink you see there was used to uh, empty the chamber pots right. partially. Um, it's really fascinating that this has a bathroom that's, uh, that, that age, and it's actually quite a good size. From the central landing, you go up to the stairs that go up to the second floor. And most of the second floor was a large open attic area, but there was this one room that was up in the center. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little scary, but you know, it's also kind of cute. Well, can't can you say, so the, the staircase is uh, so narrow uh, and it curves, it was, uh, Good lord. Big open space and then this is all these, these terracotta uh, bricks that this is built for. And we don't know if it was the children's room because um, servants live in other areas of the uh, additional buildings. Uh, but it has a really quite beautiful um, roof structure and there is a lot of stuff up there. Yes, and there's a lot of potential up there in the attic if somebody really wanted to develop this attic out any further. Uh, obviously, there's there's room enough for that one room. There's plenty of room you can see for uh, putting other rooms up there as well. Yeah, totally true. Heading outside, we can now take a look at the back view of the chateau. I think it's really pretty because it is very symmetrical. And on the uh, right corner, there is this um, small building. And it's not attached to the chateau. That is actually a chapel. Uh, the chapel was, um, that's the entrance, and it says AVM on it, which is Ave Maria. Um, it was consecrated in 1644, and it's still uh, a consecrated chapel today. Right. This is the uh, farmhouse, or farmer's cottage. Um, it has three bedrooms, uh, one full bathroom uh, and a large living kitchen. And uh, the, the roof, or under the roof, it's not developed, but there's plenty of space. Um, now, there is this little road that goes by. Um, I think we, we talked about that with the owners, uh, the, the, the son of the owner. And he said there may be, I don't know, 10, 15 cars driving by there per day. Yeah, I think that the whole time that we were at the Chateau visiting, I'm not sure that I remember that uh, maybe one car went by the whole time we were there. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. This is the back side of the, the farmhouse, and on the left side you can still see uh, the, the little chapel, and it has a lean-on, and I can't even tell you how many little storage, either sheds or lean-ons, this entire uh, barnyard has. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Every, uh, so many. It was like so many buildings, and you'll see in some of these pictures that uh, all of these different uh, farm buildings and they all had these extra lean-on storage sheds that uh, would be are great there, there, there are and it's I mean it's the, the, the sheds and stables that we have here in the farmyard so there is uh, a shed for rabbits because it's a big delicacy in France there is uh, one f uh, stable for donkeys uh, sheep, goats, uh, pigs, one large barn for what they call the vacherie, so it's for basically female cows. It's the milk barn where they also have their cows, um, which is really quite huge. I mean, that's, that's really big. And uh, then, you know, they have the hangar for all the farm equipment. So th this was um, kind of what we, we talked about before what we wanted that it's if we were interested in the chateau it should have the old farm attached to it and not 
being detached because it's, otherwise, you know, what, what, how do you maintain everything? Right, right. And there's so much potential for all the possibilities of what you could do with all of these buildings. Yes. This is the dovecot, which is behind the barnyard. Um, I think it has about a thousand um, openings for, for pigeons. Right, right. So this used to be a very uh, wealthy uh, chateau. And in 1956, as we were told, and I can only <laughs> repeat what they, they told me. Or right, us, right. But there, so there was a freak storm with hail uh, the size of fists. And the roof was of all the buildings was damaged. And um, this had one of those pokey... Uh, Versace bra kind of um, tower roofs on them, right. and so uh, I'm I'm blanking on the word, so please don't um, guess. I, I I will look it up again. But so uh, this this was so badly damaged, and they had to repair and replace a lot of roofs, and they quite frankly ran out of money, so they just left the dovecot um, to itself, and eventually the entire roof structure collapsed. But it is from the 1640s. So my apologies, but in this picture, you can see the tower. The dove cart had the same kind of roof. So that's what I refer to as the pokey thing. Uh, and next time I will see this, I will know the correct architectural term. But right now it completely eludes me. Right, so this is actually the left wing of the chateau, which is basically, uh, uh, it's a set of garages areas and uh, uh, workshop areas. Yeah. This is the right wing of the chateau, of course, only if you look at the chateau from the road. Um, this has uh, accommodations upstairs. It has the uh, original kitchen of the chateau from the 16th century in it. And that tower is, uh, there's a staircase that goes up half of the height. Um, so you can go either in and down or up and there are a lot of shelves that are built um, The shelving part is built out of twigs and It was kind of confusing and so what they did is they uh, that the harvest they harvested apples and uh, Pears and all that so they cut them open and left them on these twig shelves and they naturally dried and so they had dry fruit for the winter, uh, what it, it just it, it was just great that that's all still there. One of the other things that we really loved about this chateau is it does have a very long alley that leads straight to the front gate. Yes, yeah, so the uh, alley is uh, five kilometers long, so three miles, leading from the chateau to a forest. It's it's really fascinating. It's linden trees or land trees. Uh, and it's four trees wide. Really, really quite fascinating. Um, and we gorgeous. were yes, and we were told that basically it is a a zero traffic road, right? Ba yes. Basically, no one travels on this road. Well, we we hope you you enjoyed the vlog that Stuart put together. So let's just start with things we liked and didn't like about the chateau. Right. Um, it's basically we have to go down our checklist and so we wanted well it was on our wish list was the alley with the trees so right. three miles or five kilometers that's pretty good <laughs> right um, it has it has the cemetery it's um, now this starts before we were actually kind of looking so it starts in the 16th century Right, right. Uh, so it's kind of, you know the beginnings are older, and there is actually under part half of the chateau there is a cave um, uh, or well cellar. Uh, right, it's pretty huge. Right, um, which is from the 16th century. Uh, we did not ask for a chapel. No, we didn't. But it's uh, cute. There, there is one for the chateau. Uh, we did ask for something that was quiet in rural area which the chateau is. Oh, good Lord, this is, this is rural. I mean, it's... <laughs> right. It's and it quiet. Is, and it is in an area of France that we were looking for. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, it does, does have... 
well, almost more outbuildings than than we could have wanted. Right. Almost. But you know, I I think it's better to have too many than not have any at all. So right, but we I can mean, figure every, out what to do with uh, lots of yes, outbuildings. Yes, so. but I mean, every outbuilding is also upkeep, so it's it's something to think about. Um, the proximity to uh, a vet or a medical facility. It's yes, actually, I mapped that out. So yeah. there is uh, the the closest veterinarian is fifteen minutes away, and then there are two different animal hospitals. Uh, for any kind of emergency within 20 and 25 minutes away from us. I mean, this is basically the direction, so I'm sorry for, for <laughs> looking really odd, but it's, yeah. it's not there. But um, so th that's that's really good. And the, um, there are two very large hospitals within for, for humans, right? Because, you know, I mean, things right. happen. So it's in, uh, the largest or the, the, the longest is 25 minutes away. Driving distance, so that's all. Um, that's pretty good. I mean, so it's rural, but it's not uh, in in the backwater, right? Where there's nothing, right? And there are uh, small towns nearby that have uh, boulangeries or patisseries. Oh yes, we yes. said. Oh my God, that was that one of was, those things. That was a requirement. And we right? got a great comment on this. And it's like, okay, so you know, just buy it the day prior. And uh, well, we have two boulangeries, and I could point again. It's opposite direction, yeah, and I will. And it's each is seven minutes away. Uh, both of them are um, doing biological baking or organic baking, as we say in the states. Um, yeah, seven minutes each. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, the next larger town uh, is eight minutes away, uh, where there is a supermarket and a gas station and a pharmacy and uh, good lord, what else? Well, the chateau itself did have original uh, wood flooring. It did have its original flooring. Yes. It had original woodwork, uh, boisserie, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, oh, the fireplace mantles. They are... Right. Now, they, the, the uh, original fireplace mantles that were put in in the 1640s, they're gone. Um, so, all of that was redone at the end time of Louis the... 15, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful. So, I mean, there's, there's no complaint here. <laughs> it's, just, it's just more descriptive. Um, love the size. The rooms are, they're large, but they're livable. Um, there's a lot of light because it's like most of the, the, the country chateaus, it's one room deep, right? They just say chateaus. I don't know. It just says, uh, most of the country chateau, is they're, they're, they're one room deep. Of course, there, there are exceptions to that. Um, so very livable. We love that it has three staircases. Right. Uh, that's really quite a bonus. Right. It had on the estate, it, it did have uh, Cedar of Lebanon, which Patrick was really happy about. Two. Two of them, actually. Yes. Uh, now, we can, I, well, those are very uh, noticeable, but it was... Uh, at the end of October, so we don't know if there are any. Uh, what, what are the what the other trees are? I think there's a plantain tree. Um, it is. It, it is. Uh, it's a, a large enough property without being too large. There, there is such a thing as uh, too much, too large, or too much work. Right. Um, One of the wish list things was. Uh, an entrance hall that had like an impressive staircase. Oh yeah, this one does. And this one did have one. That was the best staircase we have seen on this trip. Loved it. Absolutely beautiful. It, it was, um, yeah, that was, that was really good. Um, uh, alcoves. Alcoves and, and true mirrors. So. Both of those things were in this chateau. Yes. Right. So, um, so we're, we're just, God, it's one of those things where uh, to tour this chateau, and we have not seen every room in, in the chateau. I mean, the rooms, yes, but there are so many doors that we have never opened. Right. Um, there is this big barnyard. Um, most of the, the, the outbuildings uh, and the barnyard buildings need to have the roofs replaced. Um, right. The When you look at the chateau, the, ch the part on the right, uh, one side was replaced about 80 years ago. The other site, the terracotta, is way over 120 years old. So, um, there are a lot of cost factors involved. 
Right. Uh, this has two wells and city water. Right. Uh, that that's that's, that's pretty great. good. That's great. Um, of course, there's no <laughs> no internet. <laughs> well, wow. there, there is. It's uh, actually it's 4G. That's that's already pretty quite we did, good. We did find that out. Yes. For for rule, it's pretty good, and there are multiple. There are different um, cell phone providers, and mind you, where we live here in in the United States, on a good day, we might have two bars on our phone. Usually, it's one. If uh, if that. There are plenty of people who are to play of times when, when di different providers they have zero bars here. So France has a much more saturated uh, market in terms of, of uh, coverage. Um, it, it's you know I mean, it's, you need to kind of be able to connect to the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. So we pretty much as far as our uh, must have and our wish list. It pretty much uh, checked off every box that we had. Well, there's one thing it doesn't have. Yes. Now, we, we do have a little lake, which is cute. Yes. Uh, there's an old foundation where they had uh, a house for duck and geese. Um, that's gone, but it, it has actually a quite large pond. Right. Uh, but it does not have a walled in uh, vegetable garden, a potager. So, but it has two. Oh, I don't know if that makes up right. for it. Right, they're not walled in, but there are two gardens. So. It's it's nice, and it's right. uh, it's it's a very small community. Um, so, yeah, this was a tough one to think about, and uh, we did for quite a while. We did, and then what happened? Well, um, I kind of pulled my French out of the closet and. Uh, we made an offer and the offer was accepted, yep. uh, however, it took until this week for the contract to be signed. Right. So we are actually, um, we're going to France. We are. Cheers. Cheers. It's, this is not so pretty, but it's, um, it's sparkly. Yeah. Cheers. We, we are very excited. So, um, this was a long way coming. Uh, some of you have said, oh, you, you already have a chateau. Well, until this week, we did. We did truly did not. No. So, um, and everyone told us, you do not talk about this. Uh, the, the realtor, even the owner said, do, do not talk about this right. until we sign the contract. So, it's done. It's a done deal. Right. Um, we're really tickled to death. They, uh, the the owner, um, agreed. Well, offered us actually quite a bit of the, the furniture. I think we're going to get most of the furniture from uh, the Napoleon the First era. Uh, we get some beds. Uh, that ginormous armoire in uh, walnut armoire in the one room we're getting as well. Right. Um, they will not clear out the all the attic spaces with. Right. I think that I don't know twenty or thirty trunks. Who knows so what we're going to find? So lots of possible treasures to find out, Robert. Or right? skeletons. I mean. Well, either well, either way, it's going to make for a great vlog, isn't it? Hey, well, you know, it's it's something. <laughs> right. Um, it's really exciting. Yeah. So having enough space is great, and it's also petrifying, yeah. to be quite frank. It's. Um, we're getting this house ready to put it on the market. Mm -hmm. um, we have to pack so much stuff. Uh, it, it, it's really scary. Now, um, my parents are tickled because I haven't lived close to them in 23 years. Um, Stuart's parents are most probably mortified in, in a way, uh, but they're very excited for Stuart, right? Right, right. So it's, um, and we can't wait for them to visit. So um, I did tell one of my cousins, Angela, that we're doing this and she said, okay, I'm coming for 10 days in May to help you set up a vegetable garden. Okay, I love it. So um, we're on the move, kind of, sort of. And thank you so much for watching. Yes, and we'll keep you updated on what's going on. Thank you. Goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you'd like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.